Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He is good all of the time and He is worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the Living God, who loves us with a true agape love. He wants to fill our hearts and, and our minds with His perfect love, His perfect peace, His, his joy, His wisdom, His strength, His patience. He wants to fill us with the, His nature. He wants to give us self-control. It's there. It, it really is possible to have self-control. Self-control over you and over your emotions, over the things that you think, over the things that you will do. When that situation and that circumstance happen today, you'll be able to walk through it with joy. The, the, the joy that we have in God. See, the Lord will take what is evil and work it work it out. He'll work this thing out. It won't go in the way that the devil wanted it to go. It won't consume you. It won't consume your soul. It will not have you. You can't be plucked from the Lord's hands. We have life in God, in Christ. We have life in Christ, in God. We have life. In fact, the spirit of life is in us, teaching us all things. Because we said yes to the Lord, the Lord wants to fill us. I'm, I'm telling you, he wants to fill us with the knowledge of who he is. The knowledge of his will. The knowledge of his will is that we know him, that we trust him. The, the knowledge of his will is that we would know how much he loves us. How much he's every day pouring that love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. He's continuing to comfort us, to speak to us, to direct our steps. He wants to help us and in every way. We need to have a great desire for the one who created the world and all that there is in it. The strength of the Lord Jesus is it, it is ours to weather whatever situation we're walking through. See, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, the one that raised Christ from the dead, is living in you. Now, I wrote down this thought today, the labor of Jesus, because, you know, we, we have these situations and circumstances, these issues of life, the trouble that is in the world, the trouble that comes knocking on our door, and I mean the door of your heart the door of your mind, the door of your emotions. But Jesus, he labored. He went through the situations and circumstances, the accusations, the rejection, uh, the, the, the hitting, the spitting, the kicking, the, the being crucified to the cross. If you look at his life, you see rejection from the very beginning. You know, Herod, he, he, he needed to kill all those babies <laughs> in order to wipe out the one that was coming, the one that was born. There was rejection there. Yet Jesus, knowing all this history, knowing everything that would be done to him and the the people, even the people that were around him that he was close to, they said they believed, but they didn't, they, they didn't know, they didn't really believe. Not the way he, he, that he had told them. I'm thinking about Mary and Martha when, when Lazarus had died. And they said, why, you know, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And he said, don't you believe in, you know, I am the resurrection and the life. I, I told you that... I, but he had to show them. <laughs> but their unbelief brought him to tears. It hurt. But it did not stop him from doing good. It st did not stop him from doing what, the, what he was called into this world to do. The distractions and the noise. The distractions and the noise. It didn't stop him from doing good. 
Jesus went about doing good. He suffered to suffer in this life. It's, it's, through the, the, it's going through the hardships, but still doing what the Lord said to do without grief, without sorrow, without climbing in the bed and pulling the blankets over your head for days and hours. It's pressing on. It's pressing on to the to to the higher life that we have in, in God. Pressing on to the high calling. We press on. Jesus said in John chapter chapter fourteen. You believe me, believe also in God. Trust the Father. He was saying that whatever you ask for in my name, I, I will give it to you. The Father will give it to you. If we need strength, if we need help from temptation, strength from temptation, a way out of temptation, he will, he's already delivered us. He's already made the way. He'll direct our path. To be able to cast worry and fear out of your life and not live in its con in, in its constraints where the devil wants to deceive you and keep you in this feeling realm in this box in this four-walled mind of yours where we can't get out and do what our father is showing us to do i know that a lot of us have good things in our thoughts to do for our health for somebody else for the house for the family for the world. God's given us dreams and visions. He's given us good thoughts. His thoughts towards us are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring us into a successful end. And that success, successful end is the testimony of the Lord Jesus. Look and see what the Lord has done for me. Jesus labored. The labor of the Son, he, he labored. And the continuation to do good. I don't know that it was that much of a strain for him, but the unbelief that saddened him. It didn't weaken him. He continued to do good. He didn't look at it and and and, and just scratch his head and and ponder. He went in prayer. He took it all but into prayer, into prayer. We ought to always pray about everything. Instead of having the devil's, being in the devil's nature and the devil's territory of worrying. It's not our nature to worry. It's our nature to trust God. To trust in the name above all names. That's our nature. Our nature is no longer in, uh, like the world's nature living according to how you feel or how, how this world is feeling. <laughs> There's nothing that we should fear but the living God. And that goes for everyone. There's no greater fear than, the face, than to face the living God. He's the one who drew the line in the sand between heaven and hell. Between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of of darkness he drew the line and said you choose who you want to serve today you choose who you want to follow the whole world can choose who they want to follow but I want to be the example of Jesus Christ the best example the very best example that I can be you ought to want to be the best example that you can possibly be in God so that many will run to Christ because your life is a testimony of Jesus. You're laboring through this life, but not in grief and sorrow. Jesus bore the grief. He took the sorrow. He took the hurt and the pain, the rejection. He took everything so that we could live free. So we can walk in the freedom that he's given us. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. He said that to those who would follow him. If you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, believing, trusting, letting, if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
pride of life won't overtake you. The lust of the eye won't, won't have you. It'll come knocking, but you won't let it in. Because you're so in love with the one who loves you. You so know the one who, who knows you. That you'll never want to let him go. You're able to walk with him and talk with him and be with him forever. We have to press into the high calling. We have to run and not be weary, walk and not be faint. You, you know, in Isaiah chapter 40, when it's talking about this, he's talking, he, the Lord's saying, you know me, don't you know me? Don't you know me? I mean, this is the most important thing of all. Don't you know me? Jesus said that the king, he, he was asking the disciples, who do you think? think I am? Who do you, who do they say I am? Who, what do you, who do you say I, I am? We have to know him because he's given us the keys to the kingdom of God. If we know him, we have keys. We have power. We have authority in the knowledge of him, in this intimate relationship with him. In our heart, we know that he is. He's the living God. He's the son of the living God. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. I tell you, situations and circumstances, they're going to come and they're going to, to go. They're going to come and they're going to go. But remember, there's trouble in this world, in this life. And it's okay because Jesus Christ has overcome all of these things. And we overcome just like he did by laboring in the word, laboring to enter the rest of God. You don't have to worry. It's not by might nor by power. It's not by your strength, your energy. It's by the spirit of God. If we will just follow him, trusting that the Lord is who he is, He's opened doors for us. And he shows us how to unlock the doors. He reminds us of the truth. The word unlocks doors. Our faith unlocks windows. It unlocks doors, spiritual windows, spiritual doors. It enables the angels to go up and down the ladder of heaven. The Lord wants to take care of us, protect us, keep our heart and mind in perfect peace, supply what we need. And all we have to do is know him, acknowledge him in all of our ways. Allow him to direct our thoughts. To direct our path is to direct us in the direction that we'll go today. And it all comes from trusting him, leaning on him, relying on him. See, I, I, see I, I want to give him my all, all of me, which that means I want to rest completely in who he is and who I am in him. I am secure in Christ. Jesus is secure in the Father. He's the word that became flesh, that came out of God. He's the word that he is God. And that word is in our heart and on our minds. He put it there. Don't trust in what you see and what you hear. Trust in what the Lord said. Stand on that. Keep speaking that. Come to that secret place of the Most High and lean on God. Live in that secret place of the Most High. And let the shadow of the Almighty, the wings of angels, cover you cover your household, cover your, your job, whatever you're walking through. Let them be the keepers who keep you. They're there. God is with us. It's his promise to never leave us or forsake us and to keep our heart and mind. I'm, I'm saying trust in the Lord today with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. I believe the promise of God. I ask you to do it too. De declare in your life what he's spoken to you. Like he said to Mary. Through Elizabeth. 
Blessed is she that believe, for there will be a performance of what the Lord has told her, what the Lord has told you. He will keep you. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. Labor in the word of God. Labor to enter the rest of God. Talk to him about him. And talk to him about his promise. And lean on him about everything. Ask for his, the comfort of his love. If you're hurting and filled with grief today and sorrows taunting you and beating down your door and your heart is stretched as far as it could stretch, there's a rest for the people of God. There's a rest for you. And the Holy Spirit will tell you what that is. He'll tell you. He'll give you comfort today. He'll give you peace today. Even if you have to walk through it again and again and again, see that thing again and again and again, it keeps happening again and again and again. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The situation will end. The circumstance will not last forever. And the Lord will keep your heart and mind. In the name of Jesus. We are free. <laughs> My last words, labor. Labor like Jesus. Mind fully on God, fully on heaven, fully on the Father, fully on who, fully on what God said. Trust him today. Bye-bye.